Yo, 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 what's going on guys? It's Buns and welcome back to the road to Gladiator. Tonight, I'm going to break down a 7.1 Talents and Honor Talents video for Assassination Rogue. A lot of you guys have been asking for it, and now that we are a couple weeks into the patch, I want to be able to give you guys a great analysis for what you guys can go off of to help you guys when you're making decisions, not only for what's good for the majority of time, but also some niche situations when you get into arenas, making those swaps in between games, helping you guys out. So the first thing first, we have our first row of talents between Master Poisoner, Elaborate Planning, and Hemorrhage. And that for those of you guys that want to know some really intense details for how these numbers actually do break down, I'm going to recommend you check out this video right here. This is a whole video dedicated to breaking down specifically these three talents and the numbers behind it because I was very curious how much benefit we were getting after some of our damage nerfs between playing these talents. The majority of the time when you are playing Assassination Rogue, Elaborate Planning is going to be the best talent. And Elaborate Planning gives us 15% damage when we use our finishing moves, and it goes for all of our spells. So it gives us just a 15% damaging increase, and we're using finishing moves a lot, right? Between our Envenoms and our Ruptures, we have a lot of damage up onto the targets, and it's just very efficient, straight 15% damage. Master Poisoner is the second best talent. And this increases your wound poison from 25% up to 30, which is good for pressure. And the damage that you get from poisons is solid during the game as well, too. Especially when you're not able to sit on the target as much. It gives you a little bit more rot pressure when you have, the, when you have deadly poison up on the target. It gives you a little bit more pressure and it's harder for the healer to keep up with. But most of the time, you're going to want to be playing elaborate planning. Now, hemorrhage really is not that great because of two reasons. One... Hemorrhage, the spell itself, is not that efficient to use. Efficient in the way that, yes, it's on 30 energy, and that's great, but for doing 30 energy and for us using a global on it, it's really not doing that much efficiency for our damage, where we could just save up, you know, another second and use a mutilate. It's way more damage. Even though you do get the 20% or 25% on the bleeds, it's really not that significant. Compared to Elaborate Planning, I was doing way more damage with Elaborate Planning on all of my damage as opposed to 25% only on bleeds, which I have to use Hemorrhage a, as a global on every single target that I'm going to use and benefit from the 25% of the bleed damage. So it's just not that efficient. I'm going to recommend you guys not take that one, and that's why I went through this whole damage test I did earlier to make sure which one was the best test. Now... For your next row of talents, Subterfuge is a no-brainer. Subterfuge is very strong. When we come out of stealth, it gives us an extra three seconds to use our stealth ability. So, when we come out, that allows us to lock down every target, whether or not we want to sap immediately and get two stuns into the target, or if we're going to silence the healer, then stun off that and stun another target. It gives us a lot of flexibility, not only on our opener, but also as well, too, when we're vanishing. And this is even more important, right? Because of the limited amount of peels that we have in Assassination Rogue, it's important that when we do vanish, that we're using it in a way that we're going to benefit the most from using the utility of being in stealth, whether that's corroding a healer, whether that's stunning down DPS, whether it's double stunning to help out and peel for your partners, Subterfuge plays into that, and it's a huge reason why it's the best choice here by far. Now, the next row of talents that we have is our 45 row, and this is normally going to favor Vigor. So Vigor, it's going to increase our energy pool by 50, which bumps it to 170 for assassination, which is good. And that alone, even if there was no tag along to it, is one of the main reasons why it's so good, because we have a lot of spells for instance, the biggest spell is Mutilate, and that costs us 55 energy. It's a huge energy spender, and to be able to go in the middle of the game and have 170 energy pooled up, it helps play into Assassination Rogue's strength of being able to pool up energy, deal out damage, and have enough momentum to actually keep the Mutilates and Bleeds going to be able to apply. You're going to use this most of the time, and then the extra 10% energy regeneration that you get on top is helpful as well, too. Because outside of our Venomous Wounds, we don't have a ton of ways to get our energy back. Now, ven Venomous Wound, when we have Bleeds on the target and they also have Poisons on, they're going to give us some energy back. I'm playing with Venom Rush, which is going to give me an extra 3. Normally, it does 7 energy each time a Bleed procs. That is Poisoned. 
So that's going to play into that too to help us get our energy regeneration a little bit faster. We're not playing sub. Sub has an easier time to get energy back. Assassination really needs a lot of energy benefits they can get. So Vigor is a good choice. There are situations where you can play deeper stratagem. And having the six points is good for a few reasons. First reason, you're going to do more damage on your finishers. And that's pretty obvious. But it's also more combo point efficient. There's a lot of times where we're playing as Assassination Rogue and we end up getting procs with our melee hits or our attacks are critically striking and we're getting these mutilates where, you know, maybe I'm at two combo points and I mutilate and I get double crits and I wasted a combo point or two, right? So having deeper strat can definitely be combo point efficient, but it's not necessarily energy efficient, right? Just think about it off the top of the head. 120 energy and we're using two mutilates and we're already done that's it like that's our energy pool it's gone so even though we're gonna get better finishers off that it really limits the amount of what we can do with our energy at the start of the pool and rotating through that so it's not as efficient but one of the plus sides of this is our finisher gonna do more damage and not only this but if we use deeper strat and we're putting up ruptures on the targets it's good because they're going to last an extra four seconds if we have them up on the target and not only do more damage with that dot, but the duration is going to help us as well too to get energy back and be a little bit more efficient that way. Just the overall pool of energy, being able to have that from Vigor and the extra 10% regeneration in most situations is going to be better. So most of the time you're going to want Vigor in some all-in damage comp situations. Maybe if you're playing with a Frost DK and you just want to all-in damage, play for a short game. It's there for you, but most of the time you're going to use Vigor. The 60 row is pretty much a no-brainer. You're going to take Elusive. 30% less damage on Faint is just a no-brainer. Leeching Poison is not good because you have to sacrifice Crip for that. You're Crippling Poison, which is obviously not good. You need to be able to keep on your target. Cheat Death, it's just not good enough, right? Like Maybe if it was on a shorter cooldown, like 45 seconds or a minute, could be considered, but... To the fact that it's on a two minute cooldown is just really bad, right? We The 30% all the time for only having to use a global is strong. I would say that that's by far the best talent. Could there be better? There's not really an option for it in this row. So this one kind of just outweighs itself. Now, moving into the 75 row, we're looking at internal bleeding versus prey on the weak. And basically, I'm going to encourage you to use internal bleeding most of the time. One of the main reasons why I want to encourage you to use internal bleeding is that the bleed that you get from using your kidney shot is going to help you get energy regeneration off. So if we open on a target, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. If we open on a target and we go in, we stun the target, we get the rupture up, we get our bleeds up, and then we follow it up with a kidney... Then we have three bleeds on the target, and that's a great time if you're looking to do burst damage to use your Exsanguinate, because your bleeds are going to be ticking really fast, you'll have all three up, and you're going to have a lot of burst energy to spend during that time when you have the three bleeds up, which is a very efficient way to do it, and even if you don't get the best case scenario, that bleed is still helpful when you're trying to rotate through, and it's damage on top of that. Now... You can play Prey on the Weak, which is just going to increase the amount of damage you do on targets that are in your kidney, your cheap, and your sap. And it's not just you as well, too. It's all sources of damage from you, but it's also for other targets as well, too. So, if you're playing with a Frost Mage, for example, and you're going in with a kidney, and you're playing a comp where you feel that you want to benefit the most possible burst to be during your kidney shots and your cheap shots to be on targets... Not only you can benefit th from this power, but everyone else on your team can as well, too. So there are some situations where you may end up using it. And I would say that really the one that pops in my head more than anything is playing with a Frost Mage, trying to benefit during those stuns. Most of the time, I'm still going to encourage you to use Internal Bleeding. It's a good damage. You're mainly using your kidneys on your kill target as assassination. So it doesn't really hurt yourself in terms of using it like as kidney as an off target because most of the time we're using our kidneys into our kill target for lockdown because assassination has limited peels as is and you're usually relying on your partner to have peels in this situation so i'm going to encourage you to use internal bleeding prey on the weak situationally can be used in those stuns for max damage between you and your partner now your 90 row is between alacrity and exsanguinate and most of the time Exsanguinate is very strong. It's a 45 second cooldown and it's going to make your bleeds uh, go 100% faster. So when I have Rupture on the target, when I have Groat on the target, and we have our Kidney on the target, 
just like I said in the example before, using Exanguinate right after that is great because it's gonna give you a burst energy on the target where you're rotating through those bleeds, huge energy regeneration during that, and you can use it in different ways. You can use it as an all-in burst damage where you go in in the opener, you spend all of your energy going through and applying those bleeds into the kidney shot, then you exsanguinate with the Vendetta. If you want to do huge burst damage, you can go that route. Or you can also use exsanguinate as kind of a filler when you're trying to have some downtime and you need to get some damage out. That way as well too, being efficient. So let's say your Vendetta's on cooldown, you're going for a second rotation. You can also go in, use it as a way to increase your damage and give you some more energy to get bleeds up on multiple targets and have pressure that way as well too. Alacrity can be good in some 2v2 matches and games that are going to go longer where you feel like you're going to have high uptime. So I'm going to say like 2v2 situations, this can be used. And in some 3 situations, you can choose to use it or not. But honestly, I think that the burst energy that you get from using Exsanguinate and the short cooldown, it's really only 45 seconds, is very much worth it. Alacrity, I think it's best used in twos and long games if you feel like you're going to have high uptime and you're going to be able to maintain having that haste up and getting your 20 stacks because it's basically you have to be able to have high uptime and you'll keep this up for most of the game, but if you get in a situation where the stacks fall, that's really bad because it took a long time to work up to that point anyways. Exsanguinate, it's instant. There's no ramp up to it whatsoever. Once you have your bleeds up, you can use it. I'm going to highly encourage you to use Exsanguinate. Alacrity is a decent option in twos, and there's some situations if you feel like you're in long pace games where you can have the uptime and maintain that, you can choose to take Alacrity. Most of the time, it's not the best option. Agonizing Poisoning, I see some players use this as well too in 2v2 situations, but for the most part, I think it's very bad because it takes, you're not able to use your Deadly Poison, which does a lot of damage for you as well too. And even though this is going to end up increasing your overall damage from your finishing moves and your general abilities by like 33%, it's honestly not worth giving up your Deadly Poison in most situations. And with that, not only are you giving up Deadly Poison to use that, but then you don't have any burst energy talent while either taking Exsanguinate, which helps you out with energy, or Alacrity, which helps you in long-term energy. You're just very energy starved playing with Agonizing Poison, so I'm not going to recommend to take that. Your final row, we're choosing between Venom Rush, which is going to boost our passive by an extra three. So it's going to boost our Venomous Wounds. Normally, it's going to give you seven energy, Venom Rush gives you an extra three, which puts at 10. Most of the time, you're going to want to take this. But Marked for Death is very strong as well, too. And in games where it's going to be a shorter match, or you're going to have opportune times where you want to fit in burst windows, Marked for Death can absolutely be good, and it's very helpful for being efficient. Whether you want to go in, spend your combo points immediately, getting your bleeds up and ruptures, then following up with an instant kidney on the target can be very efficient in burst windows. So Mark for Death is absolutely a choice you can take where you feel you could benefit from having those burst five combo points. But in a long game where you're just trying to do damage and outlast the other team and have pressure, Venomous Wounds is very good because you're going to have more energy regen throughout the match. This is one of those situations where you can kind of decide what comp you're playing and what you're versing against and make that choice for yourself. Venom Rush, longer game, you're going to get more benefit out of it and more energy rotation. Shorter game, Mark for Death, you could see two uses of it, and it could be very helpful for you getting kidneys off and rotating through damage. Now for our honor talents. Now let's go over trinkets first. We have Gladiator's Medallion, which is a standard two-minute trinket out of any CC. We have Adaptation, which is going to take us out of the first CC that's five seconds or more. And then we have Relentless, which received a nerf in 7.1. It's now reducing incoming crowd control effects by 20%. Now, originally, there's a reason why a lot of players that are on Horde are playing as Orc, and that because it pairs very well with Hardiness, which was reducing the amount of stuns that you sit in for 20%, and Relentless was used at the beginning because it matches up with that very well, and it stops the amount of stuns you're in. Still very helpful for that, but it did receive a 5% nerf on Relentless, making it a little less favorable. But let's break through when you're going to use these the most often. Most of the time, you're going to choose between Relentless and Adaptation. Relentless is great when you're playing against multiple melee cleaves where both DPS have stuns, like Ferals, Rets, Warriors, 
anything of that nature. If there's two classes like that on that team, Relentless is great. It can also be great in situations where the enemy team has two casters, such as Warlock and Mage, where you're going to be sitting a lot of CC, and maybe even a Druid as well, too. And it'll help you get out of CC faster. The second option is going to be Adaptation most of the time. Adaptation for me on Horde gets a little less usage than it does on Alliance because of Orc versus Human Trinket. And I think Human Trinket partners very well with Adaptation because you can have Adaptation and then you can get out of a stun on 30 second cooldown. So I think it's a little less frequently seen on Horde side because of that reason. But Adaptation can be great when you're fighting against Druids that have clones. So Boomkins and Rustra Druids. That's when I'm finding myself using it the most because one of the catches is with playing Orc... If you get hodged, it's not actually five seconds, right? It's reduced. So it doesn't actually proc off the hodge. It doesn't work like that. So you don't get as much benefit from adaptation, but a lot of times I like running it against resto druids if they're playing with two melees, and I feel like the only CC I could possibly sit is that clone. Getting out of that instantaneously and then having the next one off too is very helpful. Good as well too when it's double caster and there's a boomkin or a resto druid healing the team, and you feel like you're going to sit that. That can backfire, though, if you're playing a major uh, Warlock and they fear you. Then you don't have it, so it's situational in that case. Trinket, I feel like it's probably the most uh, least used talent. The one situation that I find myself sometimes deciding to use it is when I'm playing against Windwalker Monks, and they're playing with, like, a Frost DK for that death window. When the, when the Windwalker chooses to use his death... And sometimes if you end up getting caught in Relentless and they have the damage lined up and you're already low health, sometimes you can die without having faint up in the stun. So in some case scenarios, you can choose the trinket or if you just feel like you want to be able to trinket something at an opportune time during your matchup, you can go that as well too. But out of the three, I probably play Relentless the most, Adaptation the second, and Trinket the least. Breaking into the next row of talents, we have Hardiness pretty much rarely used right it's pretty much there for hard swaps and that's not as helpful as the other two talents whether it's the 10% health if you're playing against casters or the blunted damage for melee attacks by 50% that's helpful as well too if you see anything with double melee I normally run sparring if it's one and one I almost always go reinforced armor and then finally if it's double caster reinforced armor and i think that for the one-in-one -one situation if you feel like the specific melee class you're playing against is going to do way more damage than the caster for whatever reason you can decide to go sparring but honestly i just think that the 10 percent passive health is going to be a much better choice than sparring which is kind of a proc chance right so in that one-in-one -one situation with the caster and a dps i really do think it's better to go with the 10 percent health now our third row of honor talents you're mainly going to play with either Cut to the Chase or Maneuverability. Cut to the Chase is great against classes like Druids, other Rogues as well too, because you will be moving around very fast and you won't be slowed as often. You'll have more uptime on your target. But there are situations where going with Maneuverability and being able to sprint at the target, get out of roots, get out of everything very quickly and not be latched down for that burst window can be helpful like against druids even in some situations or if you're playing against a shadow priest running at something that's going to slow you hunters in some situations but more often than not i'm normally going cut to the chase if i feel like i'm playing against a comp where i'm gonna need to benefit from that burst window of sprint it's absolutely a fine choice and sometimes weirdly more often than not i see myself taking maneuverability more often in twos than i do threes in threes and twos Two, sometimes you have to benefit from having that burst window, and it feels like if you're playing healer DPS, you get like a 10-minute game, but usually there's only like two or three opportunities where you have like a 10-second window to capitalize on players not having trinkets up and being able to maximize that damage, and I feel like maneuverability can be great during those windows to help you secure the kill, help you secure big cooldowns. So just some information on that one. Your fourth row of your honor talents is very situational i would say that more often than not i find myself playing unfair advantage a lot of the time especially in twos where i feel like i'm not going to be taking as much damage i'll either be sitting on the healer and having more pressure on them because i am killing the healer and their dps could be on my other target so i want to just benefit from having huge crit damage turn the tables can be really good as well too if you're getting stunned 
especially if you're playing like double melee and they have both stuns coming out and being able to recover after that having that extra 15 percent damage can be very helpful in being able to turn the tides and especially comboed with playing orc very good with relentless because you're coming out of the stuns very quickly so you're going to actually be able to benefit from turn the tables a little bit more efficiently as opposed to being locked down for longer time so it just gives you a little bit more fluidity with the spell as well too Honor Among Thieves, this is probably the one I use the least, but if you're playing with a class that's going to crit very often and has some synergy, you can go with that. For example, you could use it with a Frost Mage. The catch is, is that they have to be within 15 yards, so more often than not, unless you're playing with your Frost Mage and you kind of know you're going to be stacked on top of each other, or you're playing with a class such as Warrior and they're using Pain Train, even though that combo is not specifically great for Arena's Warrior Rogue is kind of a random comp, there are some situations if you're playing with a partner that's going to be critting a lot and standing on top of you, you can go Honor Amongst Thieves. I feel like that Turn the Tables and Unfair Advantage are the ones I use most often. Now, Deadly Brew is definitely the choice I go with 90% of the time for our fifth row. It just does a ton of damage. It's very efficient that you don't have to use Wound Poison to be able to get your Mortal Strike buff up and it allows you to have that dot there while getting the Wound Poison up very good the situations where i like to go shiv is against rep paladins very good against rep paladins and the second catch too is if you're playing a comp that's going to all in a healer and you want to just try to kill the healer and stop him from doing anything shiv can be very good against classes like resto druid and misweaver monks that like using spammy abilities to top themselves up and not be able to actually use those. So it can be used as a defensive to kind of mitigate some of the damage that classes like Ferals, Frost Decays are doing as well too. Also good for an offensive train onto the healer as well too. Shiv, great ability, good utility. Those are the situations that I use it in. Finally, we have our last choice between System Shock and Creeping Venom. This is really going to depend on what comp you're playing and what you are trying to accomplish against the comp you're fighting. So let's say that I'm playing Rogue Mage. Most of the time, I'm going to go System Shock because System Shock single target, I'm more than likely going to always have my Garrote Rupture and Lethal Poison on the main target. It's going to give that burst damage. It's also going to give us that short window where that person is locked down with a 90% slow. Even after the nerfs, this is still a solid choice especially when you're playing a more control comp. Now, if you're going to be playing something that's more rot heavy, like you're playing with an Affliction Warlock, you're playing with a Feral, you're playing with a Spreest, Creeping Venom is great, and you're going to do more overall damage with that. So especially if you're playing a rot comp, very good talent to go. And most of the time, people are going to be moving around. It's arenas, right? This is not PvE. We're not slaying dragons. People move, all right? You have to move your character to play World of Warcraft. You're pretty much going to have this up all the time unless it's dispelled. Super solid. Depends what comp you are playing as and what you're trying to accomplish against the comp you're fighting. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope that this was helpful for you. I know a lot of you wanted to see this video come out and I wanted to make sure that I was able to play a lot of games and have a good idea to be able to give you guys the best information possible. Dudes, I'm out. Have a great day. I will catch you guys on the next video or see you guys on the live stream during the afternoon. Peace. Later, guys. Yo, yo, yo! What's going on, guys? It's Buns, and welcome back to the road to Gladiator. Today, I had a very long stream. I ended up streaming for about six and a half hours, and I played a ton of games today, but we tried.